Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to present several cases and try to explain some of what I'm seeing, some of what I'm thinking, and we can have comments following that if there's time. Um, the thing that I'd like to leave first and foremost is imaging supports a clinical diagnosis. You've got to have an idea of what's going on for your patient. Uh, a consideration for what's wrong with that individual, what sorts of problems they're having, and the imaging either excludes the issue or supports what you're thinking. And the extent of the diagnoses that may be made from imaging should be limited. If that's being used to replace history, a physical examination, or a knowledge base, there's a failure in the system. Craniocervical instability is a dynamic process. A single image in a single position doesn't answer the whole problem. Although Harris measurement is described as no more than 9 millimeters and at 1.2 centimeters or 12 millimeters, there's ligamentous failure. Movement, a dynamic process of tipping forward and back, deflection and extension, if there's movement more than one millimeter, that's abnormal. That already suggests ligamentous failure. Grab map stone oaks measurement, which you really well presented, is a correlate to ventral impingement. And my way of thinking is that ventral impingement and tension on the cord is injurious. And there's a normal range in translation described by Weasel and Rothman of no more than one millimeter. Uh, White and Punjabi also believe that one millimeter translation at craniocervical junction is also abnormal, and they found improvement with surgical surgery. So there's two methods that are reliable. Plain films can be used, but to get the trajectory, to get correct alignment and reproducible images requires cross-sectional imaging, which is either CT or MR. Both have use and drawbacks. This is my technologist and a model demonstrating how we position people for CT, for a flexion. It's not a perfect flexion, but it's a way of getting flexion on a CT scanner and she's demonstrating flexion position and a pillow under the neck to get extension. Again, there, it's not perfect because there's no axial loading and one of the issues that people face in their positioning is the brain is putting weight upon the spine and that changes the position to a passive supine image. An open MRI can also be used. I don't have one, but there's one up the street. I love them. I get to reinterpret their images frequently. Um, first person is a 50-year-old with hypertension and diabetes, long-term headache, long-term occipital headache, which is worsening, much increased retroorbital pain, and she came up with a newly recognized left sixth nerve palsy. So. I don't know how to do the pointer. But either way, one image simply shows a CT reconstruction and a clival axial angle with skull base. And odontoid is 119 degrees. A normal range should be 150 to 170 degrees. Uh, horizontal Harris of 12 millimeters is abnormal and she has a grab map stone oaks measurement of 12 millimeters. I think much of her symptoms are likely related to brainstem impingement. And part, this is, this is how she presented to me most recently with an MRI with, an, with the sixth nerve palsy. This, CTs were for neck pain and headache a couple years earlier, which were misfortunately read as normal. And I'm demonstrating 13 millimeters for horizontal Harris measurement. 
11 millimeters grab map stone oaks measurement and 117 degrees at clival axial angle. There was no signal change on the T2 weighted images. That's a very late sign. This is a 54-year-old who's had major trauma and has had several surgeries. She has had headache, new occipital pain with motion. She has major issues with fatigue and brain fog. And what I can present is uh, between flexion and extension, or as much extension as she can do, I have 4.2 millim uh, millimeters motion on, that hor on the horizontal Harris, and that's not well tolerated. Part of her problem with occipital pain, I think when she moves her head, the hardware scrapes her skull. This is a very interesting young man. At the time this image was made, he'd had an acute onset of a headache. But he's um, got headache, worsening neck pain. He's got body weakness. He's got fatigue. He's got nausea. And he's got 24 millimeters displacement of tonsils. Clival axial ankle is high, very low, pardon, so there's impingement or suggests impingement. Horizontal Harris measurement is 11 millimeters, and grab map stone oaks measurement is 8 millimeters. He ended up having decompression and fusion and did really very, very well for three and a half years, and he went to work as a roofer. He met a wet roof he didn't like, slipped, missed his ladder, and fell, and knocked everything apart. Um, he spent about an hour as a quadriplegic but had things put back together and actually he came home yesterday and is doing better. He still may have another brush with death if he goes back to work. His mother has promised to kill him. <laughs> uh, this is a 28-year-old. She had an occipital craniectomy and she had a couple of good years, and then return of headache, nausea, weakness, difficulty swallowing, and diplopia. So she's had the occipital craniectomy, and the horizontal Harris measurement is at 11 millimeters. And that was fused with relief of symptoms, or pipe fusion. It was reduced with fusion and improvement in symptoms. Her clival axial angle was 132 degrees. Grab map stone oak measurement was 7.9 millimeters. This is another problem sort of a case. This is a 70-year-old with progressive headaches, occipital headache, worsening neck pain. She has COPD, and she's developed syncope with cough and falls, and she had had the pulmonary workup, which didn't show any new worsening, and she'd been having the cardiac workup. She had thirteen millimeters for the horizontal Harris measurement is abnormal and implies ligamentous failure. Twenty-five to hundred twenty-five degrees is abnormal and 12 millimeters of ventral impingement. I think that the T2 weighted images have problems and that they exaggerate the presence of cerebral spinal fluid. I'm sure that there's ventral uh, cervical medullary impingement, but whether this case merits surgery or not is still out. Here's another problem. We talk about it. This one came by the late spring, I believe. But this is a 45-year-old with Down syndrome. She's developed new seizure, complaining of weakness, and new headaches. And although most people with Down syndrome at this age have developed some form of dementia or are worsening, she doesn't seem to really have that. She was actually sent because of the seizure. So she also has ventral brainstem impingement, a horizontal, the 
Yeah. Uh, climate axial angle at 134 degrees. Harris measurement of 11 millimeters and 8.4 millimeters of grab maps don't know. There's ventral impingement. But this implies motion. Um, this one had a headache following an MVA. Uh, worsened headaches with retroorbital pain, occipital pain, fatigue, unilateral tinnitus, numbness of her mouth, weakness of her tongue, challenges with swallowing. So here we have a horizontal Harris measurement of 13 millimeters, which is, or even 12 millimeters, which is much. Grab maps don't oak measurement of 9 millimeters. It's just brainstem impingement. And 134 degrees, which is low. So she, this one looks like she was probably barely compensated, but come time for the motor vehicle accident, it was too much. Thank you very much. <laughs>